Hello, everybody. I have been thinking about my own mortality a lot recently, and um, it's not fun at all. You think every little thing that's happening to you, every little chest pain, not pain, but, you know, the cramp in your chest, and you're just like, oh, am I about to have a heart attack? Like, <laughs> like I, I, I've been thinking about that stuff a lot recently, and um, cancer is a big one. And I know multiple people who have died of cancer. I know multiple people who have it. And, you know, the little things that um, you hear about and you think could possibly be a contributing factor to that, like, you know, like having a sore throat and then all of a sudden I feel my neck and I'm like, oh, I've never noticed my lymph nodes before. Um, is that normal? And then, you know, realizing that I'm just a dummy and these aren't my... I mean, yes, they are part of my lymph nodes, but these are my tonsils that were never removed. And it's like a common thing for them to, you know, they're not big or anything. They just, I just never noticed them. And so like until, um, I don't know, the, the, there's definitely, I definitely need to get checked up, you know, just to do basic health tests and everything, you know, like everyone should. But it's something you all oftentimes put off, especially as a dude who is like, nah, nothing will go wrong. It's, um, you know, it's not a healthy way to look at things, but it's just the way things are. With that being said, elephants' giant hot testicles could stop them getting cancer. I never thought I'd read that sentence. Scientists claim elephants' cancer-preventing genes may have evolved to protect their sperm from the scorching hot habitats they live in. Huh, that's pretty cool. Look at that young elephant, that young beast, that young beautiful man right there. His ears the size of his head, almost like mine. Elephants rarely get cancer, and their giant hot testicles might provide a clue as to why. The idea comes down to a protein called P53, which helps prevent DNA damage in cells, including damage that could turn a normal cell into a cancerous cell. Elephants, unlike humans, have multiple copies of the gene that encode p35 meaning the gene that provides the recipe for the body to make the protein ritz volrath that's a that's like a comic villain name an evolutionary biologist at oh <laughs> that's not the name of the gene there was a period there that's the name of a person fritz volrath an evolutionary biologist at the university of oxford said this could help the, uh, to protect their sperm from hot temperatures. The, this hypothesis starts with Pedo's Paradox. It's a terrible name. Volrath told Live Science. Uh, in the 1970s, an epidemiologist named Richard Pedo um, described a puzzle, puzzling phenomenon. Large animals, despite having many more cells that could potentially turn to cancer cells, don't seem to have a higher risk of developing cancer than smaller animals. This is particularly astounding in elephants that are statistically less likely to develop cancer than humans despite being many times our size. They call it like Dick's Paradox. You know, Richard, Dick, you know. But anyway, so many times our size and they don't get cancer. So it's not about the amount of cells, it's about your genes. And I mean, that makes sense. Um, a few years ago, researchers found that elephants have 20 copies of the gene that encodes P35 protein. Humans, in comparison, have just one. The protein essentially works like a copy editor, reviewing genetic materials as cells multiply and potentially killing off cells with any damages that can lead to cancer, as elephants have multiple copies of the gene that encodes P35. They can have multiple rounds of copy editing, which could vastly reduce the risk of damaging cell surviving or damaged cell surviving. That's awesome. So basically what I really like about when, uh, the, you know, all this new science comes out about how animals do their thing. You know, the reason that they do these experiments and try to figure this stuff out and do the gene editing and stuff is because people, people get a bad taste in their mouth when they hear GMO gene editing and all that stuff. 90% of the things you eat today are GMOs. GMOs isn't necessarily a bad thing. It literally just means genetically modified. It could be to withstand a drought. It could be a fish 
getting a GMO, you know, of a different fish or a different animal so that it grows faster and heals quicker. There was a salmon that was being mass produced and it was like growing twice the size of this normal salmon in that same time period because it was genetically modified with a different species of fish. And I think it was also cross produced with an alligator so that they healed quick because alligators have a crazy healing factor to them. So like it, it didn't like make them a mutant. It they still look like a normal fish, but they had genes from these animals that were turned on into them to make them do these other things. And you know, those are probably you've probably eaten them if you've eaten salmon. Like that's just how things work. Corn, corn doesn't well, does not naturally look like that. It's been changed over and over and over again. Corns in almost everything you eat. Um, uh, Brussels sprouts, um, not asparagus, but Brussels sprouts, um, cauliflower, broccoli. Um, I think it's, what is it called? There's other, like, they're all the same plant that has been grown to be genetically modified over the years. Genetically modified could literally be a dog, like a, a little chihuahua is genetically modified, not by gene editing, but by breeding it to be a certain way over the over time it becomes something different like that literally like we have gone out of our way to make these animals be a certain way and that is also gene modifying it's not a natural thing we did it and so gmo doesn't necessarily mean a bad thing it can be it can definitely harm us in certain ways but it's not always that way but why did elephants evolve 20 copies of this gene? Volrath thinks it has to do with their testicles. Many male animals, including humans, have their testicles partially outside of their body to cool them down, which is believed to be important for creating a healthy batch of sperm. The reason this is un uh, for this are unclear, though it may have something to do with increased DNA damage at higher temperatures. Uh, through a quirk of evolutionary history, however, Elephant testicles are located inside their body. Um, as multi-ton, dark gray animals walking around in the sun, their testicles have the potential to get really hot, and therefore the elephants may have trouble making viable sperm. Uh, but if they had more copy-editing proteins, the theory goes, the sperm could be potentially uh, could be protected from damage. Well, Rath published this hypothesis as a note in the journal Trends in Ecology and the in, and evolution on June 27th. It is hard to assess why either a particular trait might have evolved in a species, Vincent Lynch, a evolutionary biologist at the University of Buffalo, who was not involved in developing this new hypothesis, told Live Science. It's possible that multiple copies of the P53 uh, gene evolved to protect elephant sperm from hot temperatures, uh, but it's also possible that uh, those multiple copies evolved because elephants are big animals, so are potentially more susceptible to cancer, Lynch said. It could be both things at once. Other large animals don't have multiple copies of the P53 gene. Whales, for example, are large animals that uh, with internal testicles, but they seem to have just one copy. Uh, but whales also have an internal system to cool their testicles down, Volrath noted. Plus, it doesn't get as hot in the water. Similarly, Animals closely related to elephants, such as hyraxes, also have internal testicles. But these animals are multiple, uh, much smaller than elephants, and small animals are way more efficient at dissipating heat than large animals. No matter how it evolved, elephants seem to have a very, uh, have a way of naturally circumventing cancer. And setting how it works may help us understand more about the disease. Volrath said. Very interesting. So this diagram here, um, I knew about the naked mole rat, but not getting cancer at all. They just don't. Um, Ringtail lemur has a low amount. Dogs have a high amount. Um, giraffes have a really low amount, and elephants have a really low amount. So why do giraffes have such a low amount? And naked mole rats? I don't know. I've heard about this, but I don't know. Probably has something to do with their genes and the way they live. I'm sure it does. It's very interesting. Pretty cool, though. And why do they have an elderly man there? And I'm sure, I guess.
anyway, that's awesome. I mean, if we can basically learn how this works, and if we have a copy of this dean, and maybe see, maybe there's a way we could duplicate the copy of the dean, and maybe he'd basically have an extra filter system. Um, that could be pretty cool. I don't know, maybe. Maybe that's an idea. I could be completely wrong, and that's not how it works, but, I mean, I think it... I think that could have some potential. What do you guys think? Let me know what you think down below. Um, hot testicles could save our lives. <laughs> like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think down below, and I'll see you on the next one. They walk.